I can spend hours and hours looking at these plants. The mailbox. So I have these two wooden kind of barrel containers. I got them last year. So Max chose. Hi everyone and welcome or welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we are going to be working on Max's room. Specifically, we are going to be doing a DIY headboard. While he's out having fun in Hawaii, we are going to be making him his headboard. So let's get into the project. I'm gonna let the sun shine in the day. I'm trying to make this darkness go away. Lines are up, and now we are going to move on to the headboard. Okay, right, we need to see how tall we want it, and then how wide we want it as well. So, on this particular bed frame, they have a welded part on it that you can screw the headboard in. So that's what I'm going to measure from that plate on the bottom to the other plate on the other side, and then we'll measure how tall we want it. Um, I have made headboards before. Uh, there is a headboard out of pallet wood on my channel. You can you can scroll pat you know scroll down and you can see that that video. Um, I am not um, new at making headboards, so this I'm going to make this headboard very similar to that one. I'm going to make a frame. And then he wants a special design out of um, sustainable, paintable, grade plywood. So, well, I'll explain more when we get there. But for right now, we need to figure out how tall we want it and then um, how wide we want it so I can make my frame. Thinking. Four foot is here. And that's a decent size headboard. Yeah, I don't think I would want it any taller because we've got that picture to put up. So maybe a 54 inch, a 54 inch headboard. Yeah, let's do 54 inch. Now, the top of this bed is 24, so 24 to 54, 30, 30 inch drop. And so we're going to do 54, yeah. speak your words, 54 inches tall. It's doing, dear. I'm measuring. Okay. On that bracket, see one inches wide, sixty one, fifty four, twenty four are our numbers. Let's go build a headboard. So we need one length of wood here, one length of wood here, one length of wood here, and one length of wood. So we know we want this 54 inches, we want that 54 inches, this one obviously is going to be 54 too, from here, Ooh, drink it. to here, green drink, 
drinking drinking seaweed. Oh, I think there might be seaweed in there <laughs> actually. This needs to be 61 inches. And then this is where our plywood headboard is going to be. So this from here to here. This starts at 24 inches. So 54 minus 24 is 30 inches. So this space is going to be 30 inches. So that's what we're gonna build. Now we gotta go get wood. I'm thinking a one by four. for all these lumber pieces. You wanna to go to the hardware store with me? These look pretty straight to me, so these are the ones we're gonna grab. Four eleven, four six feet. They are the common boards. Okay, so we are gonna cut two boards to length at 54. Now, I know I didn't tell you this, but Matt's bed is a queen size. So if you want to do this too for a queen size bed, I'm doing 54 inches tall. Let's just be sure. Yep, 54 inches tall, so. A mark. Two of our boards, 54. So when we cut it to length, it will be a perfect. And then a one by four isn't really four inches wide. It is one by, it's actually 3.5-ish inches wide. So we'll have to take that in consideration when we do our header and our footer. But To my, to my, Okay, so now the header and the foot, the footer uh, stretcher is, I measured it, it's 53, whoops, and 3 eighths. So we need to measure. Need to measure 53 and three eighths. And we're gonna cut them. Okay, so this is what it will look like all dry fitted. This bottom runner, or what I'm calling the foot runner or the footer, um, it is measured 24 inches from the top. And remember, I got that by measuring the crown of the mattress so that is where I got that measurement so again 54 54 length 53 and 3 eighths and then 24 now to put it all together we are going to do my favorite thing pocket holes okay I'm not going to bore you on how to make pocket holes again because there is a video up on my channel and I show you how to do that. But first you measure the depth of your wood with this little doohickey here. And then you put the stopper in to where it tells you how thick your wood is. And then you drill the holes. Now we're gonna drill them um, Going this way, this way, 
this way and this way. So we just need to do the back holes on the stretching, the stretcher parts. We made a headboard or a headboard frame in other words but it's nice and it's sturdy it'll get more sturdy when we put the plywood up front so this is the back side and get our plywood and put it on the front side now, we're not using just any, we're not going to use just any kind of plywood. We are using paint grade and stain grade plywood. It's arch plywood. Um, so, if you do this project, make sure that you get a great kind of finishing plywood. All it is is a veneer on top of wood that's been plied together. So let's get that and I'll show you how we're going to make it just a little bit kind of cooler, neater. All right, the next step is to cut the plywood. It is 28 inches tall. 28 inches tall by it's okay if you do 55 and a half um cut your plywood and we are going to glue it on Dry overnight. lavender or citronella plant out front. It's supposed to be mosquito repellent. Love these roses. Oh, 
all the sweet baby roses. These. I love these. I love those. Hey, dream Jess. Yeah. I can spend hours and hours looking at these plants, but I'm trying to find something to plant by the front door in the mailbox to get rid of mosquitoes, which I read is lavender and lemon balm. We'll see if we can find those. Welcome to the outside. So we are going to pause momentarily on the inside because the outside needs a little bit of a spring spruce up, so to speak. So when we went to the hardware store today, Home Depot, I got some ferns to go on the side of the front door. And I think that is really, really cute. And that's it. That's all I'm going to do to the front door. Because, guys, we are doing so much on the inside. I want something very low maintenance. So I'm going to turn you around and show you what these two little ferns look like. Okay. Here is the front door with nothing. Those two pots I got at the at home store. Um, I was going to fill them up but with flowers but I have just turned them upside down and you'll see here in one second why I turned them upside down. But here it is before and pow here we are after. This is all I'm gonna do. This is perfect for us. It is welcoming, it's warm, and let's hope I can keep these two ferns alive, but it doesn't get much sun. So here is the front porch. No, I think that's adorable, I think that's cute. That's all we're going to do. Now we need to work on the mailbox. So I have, these two wooden kind of barrel containers. I got them last year at Lowell's. And the reason why is we have dogs that wander the neighborhood. I had three lavender bushes here, here and here. They've peed on them and they've killed it. So I wanted something that the dogs could not wander around and pee on. So that is why I got these barrels. Now, we, when we went to Home Depot, I got some spearmint, some tomatoes we're gonna try, geraniums, and some thyme. I'm hoping the spearmint is a bug deterrent in the thyme just because of the smell. And on, in this little tub, tubby, we have the geraniums. Look at how beautiful they are. We have some spearmint as well. And Joe likes hot pepper. So we have jalapeno or jalapeno, whatever you wanna call it, habanero, and some more geraniums. So we, and then I got two more things of lavender to spruce up so I'm not gonna sit here and like make you watch me plant all this stuff so I will check back into you after our mailbox is all spruced up and tidied for the spring oh and we got this hoping to kind of deter all the dogs that randomly walk around our neighborhood to stop peeing on my stuff. And basically, um, basically it's pepper. Pepper and capsa capsation. Capsation? 
Um, that's all it is really. I should have probably just sprinkled some black pepper over here. But that is supposed to deter doggies, cats, and critters from migrating to my lavender, hopefully. We'll see. So Max chose walnut. This is the samples that are in his room on the floor with the pictures and he 
chose walnut. All right, next up is to sand this. We are gonna sand this with uh, 120 grit sandpaper, nothing more and nothing less. So since this is pre-sanded, this is um, paintable. Um, paint grade wood and plywood I can just go right at 120 if it was rougher obviously you would have to start at a lower grit and then move up to 120 but you do not want to do anything higher than um, 120 because it will smooth the pores of the wood too well and it won't take stain. This is what it looks like after one coat. I will lightly sand it and we will do a second coat. The birch plywood here took the stain very good. Kind of looks like water in my opinion. But the pine, true to form, kind of splotchy right there. I do like the wood grain. I think that's kind of cool, but we'll sand it lightly and we will do a second coat of the stain and we will see what it looks like after that and then we will top coat it. Mm -hmm. 